This is a very brief review of the final exam. Let's start with the airplane, which had two unstable poles in the theta to elevator, actually the theta to minus elevator deflection. So one of the more common errors was to feedback the rate in the feedback path without uh, additional compensation or notice. Because if you put a S in the feedback path with theta as the output, then you can see that if this is the unstable pull here at plus two, the zero from the feedback path in the open loop transfer function is going to collect all the roots from that pole to that zero for all gain. So no matter what you make this gain here or where you put it, this will be unstable, realizable root. So if you were to look at the SISO tool for it, and here is the arrow transfer function with the plus and the, mi uh, plus and the minus roots at 2. Here's an actuator where, which was set at uh, 13 times s plus 0.5 over s plus 14. We won't go into that, but that's a programmable actuator you have. Now if you multiply those together for your first OLTF1, your first open loop transfer function, you get the shorthand version here, which is shown over here on the SISO tool. So uh, you can move the gain up to get a decent crossover frequency here that's shown at uh, as 10 uh, but of course you have an unstable loop and it's guaranteed unstable because this pole goes to the zero so this costs you at least 10 points to not notice this or to try to sneak it by me either way now those who just fed back theta with unity feedback then they had a lot better a uh, lot better situation. However, they should have discussed the fact that feeding back theta would have been uh, questionable for this aircraft because uh, how would I do loops or multiple loops if I was always feeding back theta on the inner loop? So if that wasn't discussed, that cost you five points. The best solution would have been to have replaced the gain with um, an integral gain. In other words, 1460 over S. If you would have replaced the gain with an integral integral gain, then your uh, arrow transfer function and your actuator when put together into an open loop transfer function Here's our open loop transfer function. And if we were to feedback an S and then put an integrator compensator into forward loop, one over S, then the open loop transfer function would stay the same. And so I could SISO tool this uh, OLTF1 as so, such. And then the SISO tool would have given me something pretty reasonable that I could work with uh, to move that gain up from minus 40, get that that pole moving over here, get this pole moving into the stable range, and when I hit my uh, my bandwidth here of 10 radians per second, see I've already got 50 degrees of phase margin. Uh, and although this is flat at low frequencies, that's acceptable. And this uh, gives me a damping of around point uh, over 0.45, so this meets the design quite nicely. Which again, some of you did without adding the integrator. You fed back theta. And that's an architecture change, so you have to be uh, careful of, uh, of doing that. And of course, if we were to look at then our system, we would see that uh, our step response that's uh, quite a long time. So let's change the. You don't want to. You don't want to look at it at uh, 20 seconds. Three seconds is probably fine if the pilot's flying it. And so that's uh, that's pretty good bandwidth and uh, pretty good. We don't care about the step response because if the pilot's flying it, he'll adjust that. Uh, with, this, with the stick input. It's the next loop closure. And nobody had any trouble with the second loop closure, so this pretty much uh, satisfies the aircraft uh, part. There is one final thing you could do, 
you could put a lead capacitor in which has an unstable pole. I know this is not conventional but if we were to create an open loop transfer function let's, so let's say it's uh, 1A and take a look at that and we get size of two, let's see we got two unstable poles now and we can see that um, this actually works pretty nicely um, we're not canceling any poles, any zeros or poles in the right half plane but all we have to do is move these guys uh, over here on the left we try to get our bandwidth and it looks like our bandwidth is going to be around 12 or so and um, these two poles in the right half plane cause a breakaway and a transition into the left half plane which uh, hopefully would give us a decent uh, step response and again we're going to change the limits so we can take a look and see about three seconds is about what we're interested in not 30 and uh, that's not too bad that's not too bad now of course you might question putting an unstable pull into the system that's normally not required not not allowed but don't forget this is a highly reliable loop this is a passive instability um, and if the customer is unwilling to change the plan or to feedback something else or to do some other architecture uh, this could have been argued that hey I have total control total reliability on the inner loop this system is always going to be flying it will never not be flying of course uh, if it ever did open up you'd have serious trouble maintaining control of the aircraft so there's no really good correct answer there's uh, plus and minuses everything and of course the problem was set up that way for the aircraft so um, one final thing about the aircraft the time delay uh, should be inserted on the inner loop uh, and uh, it's inserted correctly here as a pod day um, some groups confuse time delay with delay margin delay margin is the time delay guaranteed to cause instability time delay uh, that was assigned and that was assigned was one over the bandwidth so you shouldn't confuse those two they're actually independent concepts and uh, what I wanted the groups to see um, was that if you introduce the time delay even the time delay of one over the bandwidth into the inner loop it would have changed your design for the outer loop it would have changed your design for the outer loop so um, if you didn't say that, you got partial credit for the time delay. Uh, almost everybody got the sensitivity correct, that the low sensitivity meant that the feedback was working. And the only other thing, perhaps, I should mention is that uh, you, many groups did a very good job labeling their plots, not sticking to the computer output, which is very difficult to read and confusing. This is an excellent plot that one of the, one of the groups submitted, um, which would have gotten you some extra points for presentation. And um, here's a, a table summary of uh, the specifications and what you actually, actually achieved. So this is an excellent way uh, to present results. Um, one final comment I should make uh, on this is that this was, again, intentionally meant to be difficult. Um, one group actually fed back alpha which was a mystery to me uh, they got that from a reference which I commend them for looking for a reference but alpha is not the output here it's theta and so uh, alpha would be fed back in an aircraft like this on approach for, for controlling an aircraft on approach the architecture would change and that's why uh, you would feed back a different uh, signal but this is up and away, up away flight so we, were th we want to feed back uh, pitch rate so uh, I've talked about a couple of ways to feedback pitch rate. One way would be to put an integral lag up here, which would have violated one of your constraints, but uh, it, you could have uh, justified it. Uh, the, other th the other thing that, that could be done, in fact that is done, is you could just integrate the rate gyro output. You could integrate the gyro output and put a 1 over S following the gyro output over here. And you see that would cancel the effect of the gyro. 
physically you would be feeding back the integral of the gyro and not necessarily pitch angle back right you you're feeding back qdt the integral of qdt which is allowed and which is done to stabilize this aircraft and so up and away aircraft often just feed back the integral of the gyro output in order to stabilize this loop and you see mathematically it works fine so this ends uh, congratulations on those of you who uh, who met this challenge uh, grades were all pretty good everyone did reasonably well uh, on this uh, on this exam thanks a lot